I watch a ton of climbing content. And I think that one video that has been done to death is how to work on your footwork. However, as someone who's seen all those videos, it was always nice to get a reminder of these core principles, but I did always feel like there had to be more than just flex your big toe or try silent feet. If you're anything like me, then you're probably craving new ways to view footwork for climbing. If these concepts are new to you, then in this video I still plan to introduce and explain them, but after spending years climbing with these concepts in mind, I thought it'd be more valuable to also provide my own take on what the underlying principles are and how they can have a huge impact on your climbing, even if you've seen all of these footwork tips before. So let's first discuss what good footwork even is, which in my opinion should be a mixture of control over your lower body, but also the ability to create functional movement. So that way you can reduce the load on your fingers and upper body. Many times you'll see climbers in the gym who move very smoothly on the wall, but it's hard to tell if they're just strong enough to make static positions look easy or whether they're really getting the most out of their lower body. They might have the control aspect down, but not necessarily the functional movement part. So that's why in this video I really want to emphasize how we can get the most out of our lower body. I once heard a quote that climbing is a rear wheel drive sport. And hearing this made me obsessed with finding all the ways you can leverage your lower body while climbing. We'll start with how we can use straight arms to do so. Straight arms is definitely a foundational climbing tip that I'm sure most of you have heard of. It's all about sitting in your legs, and this will teach you how to weight your feet more. This advice is commonly told to newer climbers, so that way they won't excessively pull with their arms. A common position to be in with this tip is the lie back. You'll have straight arms, a lower center of gravity, so more weight on your feet, and you'll be actively pushing with your legs to stand into the holes. All right, so this tip is all about how we can prevent excessive pulling. Therefore, straight arms becomes particularly helpful for building good footwork when used as a way to restrict your ability to pull with your arms. And this is where learning functional footwork comes into play. From this position, how many ways do you think you can get to the next hold without pulling with your arms? If you've seen my drills for beginners video, then you'll know from the third drill that this can be done with twisting motions. But you can also learn to push hard with your legs in order to close the distance between you and the hold. This lessens the amount of upper body strength and finger strength consumed for the move. One really easy way to see how this approach is more efficient is to try this out on a pull-up bar. So attempt a clean pull-up. Now attempt a variation of a pull-up, where you jump into the bar in order to assist the pull-up. You'll see that this second way is a lot easier, and the same logic is applied when you push through your legs on a climb. So let's take this dynamic movement concept and run with it. The most obvious example is to push with the legs by trying to stand hard. But we can also go back to twisting, but do it dynamically. You can generate lateral momentum by alternating push-pull between your legs, and this is great for keeping your hips close to the wall. You can do what's called an arm pogo, where you generate lateral momentum. You release an arm, and then you swing that arm to direct your momentum. This helps you lead with your chest so it tracks closer to the wall. To sum things up, there are a lot of ways to get to a hole, and a great way to develop footwork is by experimenting, so you can find as many of them as possible. The thing about footwork is that there are infinitely many ways to use your feet, and improving your movement repertoire can only be helpful when projecting. One tip to not get overwhelmed though, most of us get into climbing because we love the hole. It's a sport where I solve puzzles with my body thing, so I can't imagine that finding more ways to get creative with how we move won't be a satisfying endeavor for most of us. So just remember to enjoy the process. Two common tips that are thrown around a lot are about how to place your toes and silent feet. So in this section, we'll start with how to place your feet. You want to point the tip of your shoe into the crevices and grooves of small footholds. A common beginner mistake is to instead place it on the arch. The point of your shoe is designed to claw into small feet, and it's the reason why mini shoes are made aggressive. Shoes are considered aggressive when they are downturned, or when they're shaped to curve downwards in order to help support your foot when you're flexing your big toe. It's best to hit the hold with your big toe and then flex your ankle so that way your heel is lifted upwards. This will help you to use your calf muscles to exert force through small feet. But it is also important to not let that ankle position drop, otherwise you'll lose stability of the position and this will cause you to fall. The way that our calf muscle 
interacts with the toes to create force through the hold, and how they're dependent on the ankle maintaining its position is a localized muscular chain. Muscular chains are common in climbing, and in any physical sport really. Learning how to identify them, however, will go a long way in helping you determine what the weak link in your movements are. Let's take a closer look at what is happening outside of just what is below the knee. In this video, you can see that I'm doing a reaching move. Let's examine how each muscle in the chain contributes to my tension. As mentioned before, the ankle is exerting downward pressure into the hold. We want it to be stable in the ankle so it doesn't give out. Next up, the hamstring is creating outward pull. I like the mental cue of try to rip the hold off the wall with your leg. By pulling backwards on your leg, you'll propel your body into the wall. Finally, the glutes. By using your butt muscles, you can manipulate your center of gravity better. In this case, I'm using them to further push my hips into the wall and maintain that position. Lastly, an important part of the chain whose function is similar to my ankle is my knee. If it were to give out, then I wouldn't be able to maintain this position, so it's imperative I don't let it drop. The takeaway here, in order to execute lower body movements better, think of climbing as being full bodied. There are a lot of muscles that come together to create a chain of support, and it's helpful to learn how each one contributes to your climbing. Bonus tip, take videos of yourself and try to identify what parts of your lower body give out first. Those are weak links, and they have opportunity for instant improvement. Another bonus tip, if you learn to apply this to your upper body and core as well, then it'll make a huge difference in not just your footwork, but your technique as a whole. All right, so that other ubiquitous tip is silent feet, which is a concept where you don't want to clunkily place your feet on footholds. Instead, take the time to place your feet on footholds gently. This is all about helping beginners make sure their focus is on precise foot placements instead of getting distracted with their upper body. In my opinion, the best way to practice this when starting out is to take nice long pauses and make sure your eyes are watching your feet the entire time as you put them onto the footholds. However, we can also take a step back and think about the purpose of silent feet. At the end of the day, it's designed to help climbers learn how to move precisely and keep their attention on their legs. Let's dig deeper into that latter point. When limit climbing, it's common to have situations where a single move will be so difficult that it takes up all of your mental energy. Generally in situations like these, you're likely to lose focus on your feet because you're so zoned in on doing the hard move. But a huge aspect of climbing is all about learning to coordinate the different muscles in your body. With practice, difficult moves become less taxing on you mentally as it becomes less mentally straining redirect that regained mental capacity to your lower body. So, the takeaway. Silent feet is an important skill to practice your footwork's precision, but the ability to apply the greater concept of where your attention lies during your projecting process will continue to serve you no matter how far up the grades you're climbing. Learn to control your mind if you want to control your body. There's so many aspects to footwork and technique in climbing, and we're only really scratching the surface in this video. However, I felt like many aspects of footwork have been covered by other channels, so I wanted this to be a discussion on what I felt was lacking from the online discourse. All right, that's it for this one. A video you can check out if you liked this one is this video on all the ways I've used toe smears to increase my body tension while climbing. Subscribe if you want more technique and climbing improvement tips, and I'll see you next time.